experiment you've done over the last two days, you are going to need to justify that they are oxidation reduction reactions. They could have been precipitations, they could have been a whole lot of things, acid base. To prove that they are going to be oxidation reduction, we've got two ways to show this. There are actually two different ways of showing the same thing, but in your internal assessment of this topic, you're going to need to be able to do both of them. So it's a good idea to be able to do both with the experiments you've done over the last two days. The first thing to do is to make sure you've got the two half equations written out for those. So the one that I demonstrated for you up here, these are the two half equations. So the first thing I'm going to ask is, I'm going to tell you that this one's oxidation and this one's reduction. Using electron transfer, how do I know that this one is oxidation? Whenever you see that the electrons are in the products, it means they've been released or lost. So this is where we use that Leo goes Gur or this oil rig idea. Oxidation is loss or loses electrons oxidation, Leo. That's what we've got here. Okay, so I can make this, can, I can come to this conclusion. Electrons are lost because they're in the product side on the right hand side, so it's oxidation. That's my first thing that confirms that it is. Conversely, this one below is reduction because the electrons are needing to be added. They're a reagent, as it were. So because the electrons are being added, then it must be reduction. Okay. Ger, gain, electrons, reduction. Or oil rig, reduction is gain. So that's one way we can do it, electron transfer. We've just identified it using the half equations by where they are in the half equations. The second way is to use oxidation numbers, and that's our, probably a harder one, so you can be pretty sure you'll have to do this in your internal assessment. The first one should be really easy for working out the oxidation numbers because they're monatomic ions, ions made up of only one atom. So therefore, the rule for this is that the charge of the iron is the oxidation number. So the oxidation number here is plus 2, and here plus 3. What's happening to that oxidation number? It's increasing. So an increase in oxidation number means oxidation as well. So now I've got my two pieces of evidence to support that that is indeed an oxidation half equation. If one thing's being oxidised, the other thing must be being reduced. These ones here that are polyatomic ions, so more than one atom in the iron, are a little bit harder to work out, but we can very quickly see that this one is plus two. So we hope like heck that it's going to be more than plus two in this one. Oxygen, when it's inside something, except hydrogen peroxide, is always negative 2. And manganese, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, because there's four oxygens, has to equal negative 1. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So manganese minus 8 equals minus 1. In this case, the manganese is plus 7. And if we have a look, Five electrons is a bit of a giveaway as to why the difference is five here. It's gaining five electrons, so it's going from the plus seven oxidation state to the plus two. So the oxidation number the oxidation number reduces, so it's reduction. And that's all you have to be able to do. Remember that all elements, so like oxygen, for example, or hydrogen. Are zero, and remember that hydrogen is when it's in something, 
is plus 1. So when you're doing these ones for the experiments you did, just remember those other couple of rules that are part of working out oxidation number. That's your task today, to work out using oxidation number and electron transfer whether the reactions you did in class in the last two days are going to be redox reactions or not. More importantly, you know they are, let's justify it.